Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm showing you how to shoot a classy and elegant jewelry and watch commercial in just a few hours. Let's go. So today we're shooting a jewelry and watch commercial and we have a few products that we want to shoot. We have a watch, we have a bracelet and we have a ring and we're gonna all combine these shots into one product video for 15 seconds. The gear used in this video is very minimalistic. I only use two lights, which is the Nanlite PavoTube 30X Mark II and I use the Falcon Eyes, actually I actually have to look that up, SO68 TDS TDX Mark II. It's a big, soft, round light, uh, but why I use that? More on that later. I shot all this on my Sony FX3 and I used the 28 to 75 millimeter um, lens from Tamron and I also used actually Sony 100 millimeter macro lens. It's a very good lens for product videos and I just recently got it and I was thought I'd test it out. For macro shots, this is one of the perfect lens for product videos. Other gear was also pretty simple. The Lazy Susan I used in almost every product video I do and I used a reflector. It was actually um, used as a background, but more on that later. And of course, I need something to put the stuff on, so I used a table uh, to put all the products on and to put the Lazy Susan on, so pretty straightforward. Because jewelry and watches are pretty classy, so I wanted to have an elegant and classy look as well. The white background really elevates that look and makes everything look more shiny. The challenge in this though is to get the colors right. I worked with a lot of watch companies and they're really picky about how the dial looks of the watch. You don't want to get any reflections of the glass of the dial of the watch because this changes the color. And usually when you shoot with your camera, it looks a little different than it actually looks in real life. So you want to have to pay attention how it looks in real life. You might have to do some adjustments in post-production. I recently finished a shoot where I had to do a lot of changes to the watch dial in post-production. This is really important if uh, the, the dial of the watch is colorful. If it's black or white, it's not as important because you can just change the, the exposure a little bit and it's not the colors are black and white, there's no colors involved. But if there are colors, you want to match the colors actually seen with your eyes or match the guidelines that the brand gives you. So we don't want to waste any time for this. Let's jump into the first setup. First of all, when you shoot metal things, especially jewelry or reflective things, you don't want to shine a light directly at it because everything in the room kind of reflects back to it. You want to create a environment where you have the least amount of distraction, like reflections from the room you're shooting in. You might have seen these photo boxes, these light boxes, where everything around the product is white. So if the product is small, um, you can just either get one of those, but usually the light is not super, super good in those boxes. Or you can create an environment where there's a lot of white reflectors or white paper next to the product. If you shoot bigger stuff, that might be like a paper or you might be in a white studio if you have a lot of budget for your shoot. But I actually cheated a little bit. So I used the <laughs> five and run reflector as a background. So with the white side on top of the Lazy Susan and it still was spinning around. And then I placed the objects on the reflector, which was spinning. And I used the big Falcon as I to just hold above the product and it got rid of all the reflections of the room because there was a lot of white around the product and you couldn't see any reflections of the room. This, this might be a little harder if the product is bigger, but for a small product, this technique really works well. Setup two with the watch was a pretty similar setup to the first one. I left the reflector on the Lazy Susan rotating and I created some ambient light that's not too dark, which shined onto the reflector with the uh, falconized light. And then I used the Pavo tube to create this stripe of light to highlight the dial of the watch a little bit, go over the product and really highlight the watch. I use this quite often and it really works well for watches when you create a little bit of more interest when the stripe of light is going over the watch. What makes the third shot interesting is the animation I did in post. I duplicated the rings and then changed their size to make it seem that they are behind of each other. The parallax movement makes it really interesting and makes that shot really stand out. For the initial shot, I had the ring rotating again in the same setup with the Lazy Susan in the reflector with the Falcon eyes really close so they get rid of all the reflections in the room. And another tip that was really important for this shot is to make sure that the ring is in the very center of the Lazy Susan, because otherwise you won't get an even movement. 
For the rest of the video, the setup doesn't really change, so I feel like it's unnecessary to talk about it. I think this whole shooting setup only took me an hour or so to shoot. So you can see this is very quick and easy, and then it's just some animation and post. You can have the shoot done in a few hours. What I wanna add to this though is, when you're shooting watches, you don't wanna get any reflections from the light sources on your watch dials. Like, for example, if you have a big light source, big soft light source, and it's reflecting off of the glass, uh, it kind of gets cloudy, the glass, and you can't see really the dial. So I had that in a previous client shoot where there was a lot of like reflecting off of the glass of the watch dial. And I had to actually reshoot that because the client wasn't happy. It looks really cool when there's like light glowing on the glass, but it really makes the watch dial look foggy and it's not color accurate. So you want to get as much light in the room as possible and for especially for this watch it really was important to bring that quartz glow out so to achieve this was actually to shine a light directly at it you still want to create as much soft light as possible around the watch and really make it look classy and soft but just make sure it's not reflecting off of the glass so that's it thanks so much for sticking around until the end of the video i hope you learned something today as always a free and easy way to support the channel is hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed you might consider doing so, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions, shoot me a message on Instagram at Sepik Cinema, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.